Global Circulation in Reference to One Cell and Three Cell Theories by Amanda Walsh. The sun is so much larger than the earth that all the energy we receive from the sun comes from a straight rays of radiated energy. Since the earth is round, the energy brought in by these rays is not distributed evenly across the surface. At the equator, each ray of sun is distributed over a small area because they are hitting the Earth's surface at a 90 degree angle. At the poles, each ray of sun is distributed over a larger area because they are hitting the Earth's surface at somewhere between a 45 degree angle and 0 degree angle. Because of this, there is less energy being absorbed at the poles than there is being released, and there is more energy being absorbed at the equator than there is being released. The way the Earth deals with this is through atmospheric circulation by sending warm air up to the poles and bringing cold air back down to the equator. At first it was believed that this transport of energy was occurring through a one-cell circulation. It proposed that air rose at the equator, moved poleward, sank at the poles, and was diverted back down to the equator. But this theory did not remain because it did not account for Earth's rotation, tilt, or temperature contrast between land and water. It also didn't explain how we have prevailing westerly winds in the mid-latitudes. So, this is why we now have the three-cell theory. The three cells from the equator to the poles are the Hadley, Farrell, and Polar. For Hadley, we have air rising at the equator. It moves poleward and sinks at 30 degrees north and south latitude. The descended wind then gets pushed both towards the equator and towards the poles. The air heading back to the equator becomes the trade winds, which comes from the east due to the Coriolis force. The air heading towards the poles creates the surface winds within the feral cell, which travel from, wet, from the west, which, once again, is due to the Coriolis force. These winds move towards the poles from 30 degrees latitude and then rise at 60 degrees latitude. This is known as thermally indirect because the rising air at 60 degrees is colder than the falling air at 30 degrees. But this is created because the air which is coming from the poles is colder than the air which is rising at 60 degrees latitude, allowing for this air to rise. So, these winds rising then head towards the poles, sink at the 90 degrees, and then come back. They come from an easterly direction, once again due to the Coriolis force. And the exchanging of winds and temperature uh, air from Hadley, Farrell, and the polar cells are what account for the uh, control of the temperature difference between the equator and the poles.